Hello family, we bless the name of the Lord, we give him glory, honour and adoration for his loving kindness and his tender mercies. Today I'm reading Genesis 13 from verse 14 to 18. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had left him, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are standing, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which you see I will give to you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as numerous as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could count the grains of dust of the earth, then your descendants could also be counted. Arise, walk, make a thorough reconnaissance around in the land through its length and its width, for I will give it to you. Then Abram broke camp and moved his tent and came and settled by the grove of the great terebinth, oak trees of Mamre, the Amorite, which are in Hebron, and there he built an altar to honor the Lord. Today, I want to share with you that God often reveals the future to those who walk in faith. Here we find Abram being given an opportunity to get a glimpse into what the Lord God will do, not only with him, but with his descendants to come. And in this picture, there are verses that we've read, God made him go out to look eastward, southward, westward, northward. And God said to him that the land which you see, the land which you see, the land which you see, I will give to you and to your descendants forever. Confirming again the word I shared a couple of weeks ago, that a people of faith often have to have a picture, a mental picture of whatever it is that they are hoping for. And so we find that Abraham had gone out. God could have just said to him, which he had already said to him before he embarked on the journey, that he would make him great and that through him the nations of the earth will be blessed. But on this occasion, God causes him to go out, to have a look, to, to look as far as his eyes could see, even on the land. And God said to him that I would give you this. Not only to you, but to your descendants. In other words, even when you're not around anymore, because your time has come and you've left the earth, know that your descendants will possess this land. And I love God so, so dearly. That, you know, as a people, often we just want to even know what tomorrow holds for us. Sometimes we we, we strive because we just think that if only I know what tomorrow holds, then maybe it would help me plan you know, it would help me know how to order my life well. But often we sometimes we do not even know what tomorrow holds. Sometimes we won't even know what the future has in store for us in a year from now. Sometimes we're not only interested in what the future holds um, for us as individuals, but maybe for our children, maybe for our parents, maybe for people we love so dearly. And there are times when Sometimes, you know, people, as a result of their desperation to know what the future holds, often would go um, to people who practice all manner of evil um, things just so that they can find out what the future holds for them. But isn't it great that we serve a God of power, of might, who is not so far removed from us, He's not a God who is sitting there with a whip waiting for us to do some something evil or to sin against him so that he can just, you know, punish us and demonstrate just how powerful he is. He is a loving God, a gracious father. And in fact, he's not just our God. He is our father and he invites you and I to have a relationship with him. And it was on the basis of that relationship that he had um, developed with Abram that he begins to speak to Abraham every now and then he would give him a little glimpse as to what his future, his future generations would look like. And so if you and I are privileged to serve a God, the Bible tells us he doesn't change who he was in the time of Abraham. He is still the same God today. Will he not be willing 
to speak to you and I, to reveal to you and I what our future holds. The good thing is that in the scripture, it wasn't even Abraham who went to God to ask God to say to God, you know, God, I just need you to tell me what you're going to do with my descendants. It was God out of love, out of the deep affection that he had for Abraham, who decided of his own accord to reveal, to give Abraham a glimpse of what the future has. And so going forward, even from Genesis 13, as I shared before, when somebody has a picture, a mental picture of what they're hoping for, and that mental picture often gives them the ability to stand in faith, to stand on the promises of God, so that even through the highs and the lows of life, if perhaps the person had a vision, they will no, no doubts believe that God who has given them that mental picture will bring it to pass because one Though you and I perhaps were not the ones who saw that mental picture or saw that vision, the truth of the matter is that nobody can take away from them what they saw. And so in Abraham's life, as he journeyed along all the challenges that he may have encountered, he would have gone on even sometimes being strengthened by that picture that God had given him to say, you know what, I'm doing all of this that I'm doing, not just for myself, but for my generations to come. And if I can position myself in a place where I continually please the Lord and delight myself in the Lord, not only will he give me my heart's desire, but he would also be looking to bless my, my, my descendants just as he has promised giving them this great and vast lands that he has shown me. And we know that God whom we serve is a faithful God. We know that God watches over his word to perform it. And so in Abraham's life, even to this day, there are people who know without a shadow of a doubt that they are descendant um, from, from Abraham because God has caused his generations to be scattered across the nations. They occupy great lands. There are people that are blessed, not only the people of Israel um, um, who trace themselves um, to be descendants of Abraham, but it's because when Abraham was given that picture of what his future would look like, the Bible makes us understand that he believed God. Even when he did not have a child of his own, he still had faith that God who has promised was able to bring to pass what he had spoken. And I just think of even a scripture in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 10. It says, but just as it is written in scripture, things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and which have not entered the hearts of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him, who holds him in affectionate reverence, who obey him and who gratefully recognize the benefits that he has bestowed. For God has unveiled them and revealed them to us through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things diligently, even sounding and measuring the profound depths of God, the divine counsels and things far beyond human understanding. So as you and I walk with God, as we live a life in complete surrender to him, as we yield to his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit will unveil things concerning our lives, not just those things that are physical, but even those things that are spiritual, those things that would help us know what God wants to do in our lives as far as our walk with him is concerned. Because in the end, no matter what it is that we pursue, no matter what it is we achieve here on earth, in the end, God's ultimate goal is that we will spend eternity with him. Is that when we have run the race one day, we will stand before him and he'll be able to say concerning you and I that we have been good and we have been faithful servants. So today, be encouraged. There's nothing that you may want to ask God for that he will not answer. There is no need to, to admire people who may go to soothsayers and all these different places. Sometimes people feel that, oh, if I go and see this prophet or this so-and-so man or woman of God, then they can tell me something concerning your, my future. But let us know that if God, who is the same today, yesterday and forever, spoke to Abraham, he did not go via anybody to reveal to Abraham what his future 
was going to be like. He spoke to Abraham himself. And that is what God wants to do in your life and in my life. Yes, there are times when he will speak through people, his messengers. But often the deep and hidden secrets, often he wants to be revealing it to us. Because if he considers us a friend, why would he be going to tell people our personal business, even things that are not yet seen? He wants to speak to you and I. But it is when we draw ourselves closer in our walk with God, completely surrendering to him, that he will begin to speak to us in our, in our closets, revealing the deep and hidden secrets that he has for us. Remember what he said to Jeremiah. Even before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. He said to the same person that I know the plans that I have towards you. They are thoughts, the thoughts I have towards you, they are thoughts of good and not of evil. And that remains true for every person who has been created by God. Before we were formed in our mother's womb, he knew us. He already set out the road map for our lives. And it's in our walk with him, our faithful service of him, service to him, commitment to him, that causes him to begin to unveil what that road map looks like. And again, let us remember, just as Abraham Sometimes all God needs for us is to take that step to just obey him with that one word he's given us. And as we do that one thing, then he begins to unfold the next stage, the stage, the next stage, the next stage. He may not always come to us and reveal the whole picture to us, but we can be rest assured that he will let us walk in faith and he will let us know that whatever our future holds, it is good, it is bright, and he can position us to be those pillars of people who pray and intercede for our generations to come because we'll be doing so not just, you know, without having an inkling as to what God wants to do, but we will do so in faith because we will know for certainty what God wants to do so that when we press on in in prayer, unless the certain things change, we will not give up. And that is part of the reason why God reveals to his people the deep and hidden secrets concerning their lives and concerning their future. So today, before I go, I'm just going to quickly go over our memory verse, John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. The Lord bless you and keep you and cause you to have his shalom. In Jesus name. Amen.